Today let's venture into a painting genre that is completely new to me, the still life. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. So it's been a while that I've wanted to double my foot into the waters of still life painting and originally I honestly thought that if I were to do this my first ever still life would have been something a little more Scottish in nature so I played with the idea of making an arrangement with some tartan blankets, a bottle of whiskey, a glass of whiskey, maybe a touch that I had, um, so something very Highland game inspired but somehow I never came around doing it and pushed the idea around and then stuff got in the way and I had other priorities and commissions and stuff like that. So I put this idea on a shelf and then it basically got completely pushed over by another idea that I got actually for the first time in the summer of last year when I visited the Fordham and Mason distillery. So for those of you who are unaware of this, the Fordham and Mason has unveiled a gin distillery as a part of their new experimental hub of food and drink experiences. So this innovative and sustainable space has been opened at the third floor of their flagship in London and is called the Made in Piccadilly Distillery. I have here a statement from the Fortnum and Mason CEO Tom Arthron, who said that, quote, ever since William Fortnum met Hugh Mason and started a business, Fortnum and Mason have been in search of extraordinary new food and drink experiences, so it seems only natural to create a home dedicated to this search. And I was very fortunate to have been at Fortnum and Mason's after this hub already opened, so six months actually after it already opened, and to be lucky enough to experience it and to meet with Adam Locke, who is the lead distiller at the Made in Piccadilly distillery. So we chatted for quite a while and um, tasted the two different gins that, that the distillery offered at that time, being the Amalthea Dry Gin and the Amalthea Pink Gin. And I was so won over by both of them by the explosion of flavors that they offered uh, that I actually took both of them with me to Paris. After coming home from the holidays, it was such a nice way to somehow extend the sense of, of the holidays, especially because we went to a couple of regions where gin was typically distilled. So we really got into the gin tasting and it was such a great memory so being able to open up a bottle of gin um, in the evening after a hard day's work it was such a nice way of transporting us back to to the summer holidays in the UK and um, this is how everything came together in my head and how I thought that it would be nice to venture a little bit outside of the landscape paintings that I usually make and bring some freshness and some new impulses into my creation process and at the same time still have something that was very relatable to me to have a specific experience to refer back to and to be the source of inspiration for the next painting and this is how the still life that we are going to paint together came together in my head. <laughs> you must probably know by now that the still life will be dedicated to the exquisite Fortnum and Mason Amalthea Pink Gin, which really won me over so much that when I came back to London a couple of months later for my exhibition, I actually took some time off from this day, as you might remember, to pop into Fortnum and Mason's, not only for the tea, but also for a refill for the pink gin. And it was really funny because um, we came into talking with Adam at that point and he actually remembered me from, from August, uh, which was very touching. And we got into talking, so I told him that I was 
um, back in London earlier than anticipated because uh, two of my works for, were selected for a group exhibition at a London gallery. Um, so I was there for the opening night. He was thrilled, so he asked me for my card and um, yeah, this is how we got to know each other and um, he got to know my, my work as well. So yeah, funny isn't it how art in all its forms, because I do consider wine, gin and whiskey also different forms of art, can bring people together and how beautiful encounters can be created through occasions like this. This is what art really is about, isn't it? This is really the beauty and the magic of art in my, in my view. Right, now that I've told you the background story of this painting, um, maybe let's agree on the framework of the methodology, because the particularity for the setting is going to be that I will not really paint the still life from nature. Mm. I do not want it to be some of those more realistic paintings that I do, but rather in the style and spirit of those more symbolist paintings that I do, that are very colorful and um, very much inspired by the art of Odilon Redon and other symbolists. So in order to not be too tempted to stay too close to what I see before me and to be too dominated in a way by the objects that I'm going to represent. I would like to set a completely imaginary scene. If you've already watched my video on what digital tools I use as a help for my, for my art, you might already have had a preview of a digital sketch that I made in order to establish the dominant colors and the composition of the still life painting. Um, for those of you who haven't watched this video and you are curious, I will leave the link in the description box down below. But at any rate, I have simplified it ever since. I wanted to find a way of representing the ingredients and work them into the composition. The notes of lemon that you find in the pink gin could of course be represented in a very literal way with putting some lemons on a plate. But I also wanted to find a way to bring juniper berries into it and also to bridge the gap from, from a very literal, very traditional and um, realist representation of, of a still life and my more symbolist style. So I thought that there must be a way of working the juniper into the painting in a more decorative way. You'll see how I will do it. And finally, I also wanted to limit the color palette. As you might already have noticed for yourself, in most of my paintings that are less realist and more abstract slash um, symbolist, I try to focus on two or three dominant colors within the painting that are most frequently in a complementary contrast to one another, which I believe creates not only tension but brings a little bit of depth into the painting if you find the right tonal balance, if you find the right subtone within a color and marry it with another subtone in the opposite color to match them off really nicely. And this is why it felt obvious to work a bright pink into this painting, this being a pink gin, literally a pink gin. So I do want to pursue this subject throughout and make the color very present in this painting. Which led me from pink to red, obviously, and green being the complementary contrast of red, and green being a very important color for most of my landscape paintings. So I thought that having pinks and greens within the painting be a quite interesting idea. It would also help make it more, more neutral, more modern and more complex. We will have to find a good balance in the background with those two colors without them being too shouty, without them being 
too much in a fight with one another but rather in a complementary dance with one another so this is what I will try to achieve and um, I think I've blabbed enough already so I will shut up and get painting
this is the final result. I'm very pleased with it and I do believe that I achieved everything I set out to do. First of all, the balance of colors, the finding of the right undertone and the overall um, setting of, of a dynamic mood between the pinks and the greens. So somehow marrying our different universes between the pink gin and finding some elements that may help the transition to my landscape paintings through the way that the green sets a very natural landscapey background to the still life. Um, then of course the juniper berries here that are present in a very decorative way. They are not realistically attached to anything. They are not somewhere on the table. They do not cast a shadow nowhere. They are just floating into within the space and just creating a link between nature and the man-made being the djinn. Of course the lettering was quite 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 a struggle but I believe that we have something that is rather believable and I will leave it at that stage. I'm not sure I will be able to be any more calligraphic about it so um, this is the stage that I'm I'm pleased with and I'm okay with um, stopping here. I think I managed to create quite a nice play between the light falling through the glass so at its base um, here and also at the base of the bottle. I think this works out pretty nicely and, and it gives it a little bit of depth and um, more interest maybe. I also tried to tie the blue and purple of the juniper berries into the shadows as well as the fruit ball so that we have a better transition maybe and not just one pop of blue out of nowhere coming out of the blue haha um, in here so I gave the ball a purplish base and a greenish bluish um, undertone as well so I believe this helped bringing the different colors together in a more harmonious way. And this is all I have to say for the painting really. I do feel that I stay true to the way I usually work within landscape paintings, both in regards to technique and also to the treatment I give the different colors. I ventured outside of my comfort zone and doubled my foot into still life painting. Um, for such a personal homage to Adam Locke's work with the Fortnum and Mason's very, very, very delicious Amalthea Pink Gin. <laughs> I hope you like this video and are pleased with this a bit different painting session and a bit different genre of painting for me. Thank you so much for tuning in and as always I hope to see you very soon in my next video. Until then, I wish you a very lovely morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Cheers guys! <laughs>